The TICAD 6 Forum in Nairobi has taken a strong focus into creating an enabling environment for trade and investment between Japan and Africa. So far, the Japanese government has announced $30 billion worth of investment in infrastructure, healthcare, and social stability. My name is Charles Gitonga, and here are some of the highlights from this conference. Africa's political and business leaders are taking advantage of the first Tokyo International Conference on African Development to be held on the continent. The highlight of engagements, especially on the second day of the conference, has been on the preparedness of the continent to attract and grow investment from East Asia, especially Japan. We are preparing, um, whichever way you look at it. Politically, uh, we are better today in Africa in terms of democracy and good governance than we were 30 years ago. There's no doubt about that. Economically, uh, we are better today uh, in terms of uh, especially what the commodity price, uh, the high commodity price has done for us since the beginning of this century. Uh, so we are better than we are. Um, in terms of uh, socially, education, uh, we are better today than we are. We are in a period of global slowdown and natural resource prices have come down uh, and Part of what Africa has to do is the comprehensive development strategy that will be partly based on industrialization uh, and uh, uh, really a unique moment in time when wages are rising in China. A lot of industrial jobs will be leaving China and, uh, and up for grabs. And uh, if Africa has prepared itself, has the infrastructure, uh, as the right policy framework, then many of those jobs will be moving to Africa. The push for the Africa We Want uh, Agenda 2063 has rallied us together. And if you uh, listen to every president who spoke, he spoke on behalf of Africa. Uh, people have seen the bigger picture. And that leader again, uh, Africa speaking one voice, makes it uh, raises the stakes and raises its uh, seriousness. Social instability, insecurity and climate change are among the most talked about challenges that Africa continues to face. However, TICAD 6 has presented the continent with an opportunity to channel solutions in form of investment from Japan. Even as we focus on issues, we all know that it takes security to achieve sustained growth. Today, unique security threats are rising to fill any vacuum in governance at the local, regional, and indeed global level. Terrorism in particular is threatening and even dismembering some states. Organizations practicing this illicit and savage form of violence are spreading their cells throughout the world. No country or region is immune or distant. The terrorists are adept at exploiting open and democratic societies and are trying to militarize any sectarian or political divide. Their negative impact on economies is often severe. Africa faces serious security concerns, including a recent surge of transnational organized crime, violent extremism, and terrorism. The impacts of Climate change and desertification are growing more severe. Many African women are yearning for equal rights and young people for greater opportunities. I encourage Africa's leaders to build on the continent's progress and to press ahead with important initiatives aimed at upholding good governance, the rule of law, and human rights, such as the African Peer Review Mechanism and the proposed African Human Security Index. Most of our violent conflicts have uh, social economic uh, grievances uh, underlying. And therefore, it's important to hear from you how are we going to both silence the guns, but at the same time, deal with the African paradox of a rich African Africa with uh, huge mineral resources and natural resources 
but with poor Africans. So we need to look at both things, silencing the guns, but also dealing with, this, with that paradox. That, that should also look at broader rather than just national area. We should look at Pan-African because there is no part of Africa that can say it is totally uh, free of conflict as long as there are parts of Africa that are in conflict. The conference is also serving as an opportunity to separate myths from realities about Africa, especially about the factors that affect the economic environment in the continent. A lot of players in business worldwide are looking at places that they can enter Africa through to make an investment that is going to be ready when this fantastic opportunity actually explodes before it becomes uh, too late. But one of the things that today makes an investor either be in Europe or in Japan or in the US and feel comfortable with returns as low as 2%, 3%, and yet you still are able to get returns as high as 20, 25% on the continent of Africa has a lot to do with perception of risk of what Africa actually faces. And one of the biggest things that African countries and African business people are doing is to see how we can really bridge the gap between reality and perception as far as risk is concerned. Away from the high-level policy meetings, different countries have been showcasing their investment opportunities targeted to both Japanese and African investors. Rwanda, we are trying to show other countries what Rwanda is pro producing and we are trying to attract foreign investors. People can invest in Rwanda. For instance, we are advancing in ICT, our technology. We are now producing laptops. We have a partnership with a Latin American company, so which is a great achievement. We've been looking at the oil and gas industry one, uh, manufacturing, uh, real estate development, uh, heavy engineering, you know, ICT. These are some of the areas that we are targeting at the Japanese investors. And since yesterday, we've been talking to them. You know, yesterday was the Japan Africa Business Forum. We had opportunity to talk to some of them. Today, we've combined the Ticket opening ceremony, money in our exhibition, and also visiting the stands. We've covered quite a number of them. The response is positive, and tomorrow we will touch base with the other Japanese companies. But our presence here is not for ticket the Japanese companies alone, but businesses from other African countries. In the same way, different companies have been at hand to exhibit their innovations and scout for investment opportunities, especially in technology, infrastructure financing, skills transfer, and healthcare. Our equipment is for Biomass. It's we are waste management company, and we we manufacture the equipment that treats human waste and uh, organic waste, food waste. We carbonize it. We make charcoal and biochar which we use for fertilizer that is used to neutralize the chemicals in the soil from the chemical fertilizers. Well, for us it's mainly uh, connecting, connecting with people, connecting with organizations, connecting with uh, health insurance, health uh, ministries, so that's the most important activity for us, uh, making the right contacts to uh, try to things uh, moving. We talked about the gaps in the infrastructure space, we know what the gaps are, but the more interesting thing is what are the solutions to fill that gap? And we talked about the need to explore different areas and the need to change the, the mindset, if you will. We've approached risk mitigation or project finance or the way we do things in the same way we've been doing for 20, 25 years. And I think some of the key messages coming out of yesterday and in the discussions I'm having is that some of the risk mitigation products to attract the private finance that is going to be needed to make this infrastructure happen, we have to evolve with the times. And we can't have a one solution fits all. Part of the solution, for example, for power is going to be the small grid, off-grid and mini-grid. You cannot do that using traditional sources of finance or models of finance. Among the major investment agreements signed during TICAD 6 so far include geothermal development in Uganda in collaboration with Japanese multinational Toshiba. Kenya has also signed agreements to support her 2030 development blueprint. Uh, this MOU has been concluded 
between the Ministry of Energy and the Mineral Development of Uganda and Toshiba uh, for cooperation in the development of geothermal energy resources in Uganda. It has two broad objectives. One is to build the capacity of the technical staff in the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development in order for them to carry out to exploration of geothermal resources and be able to come to development of these geothermal resources. Number two, it has the objective of Toshiba uh, developing the first geothermal plant in the country. Uganda, uh, for the geothermal development, it is very beginning stage. So we believe we would like to be a partner to support the uh, so-called capacity building. So we would like to invite young people of Uganda to Japan and uh, uh, would like to transfer our know-how and uh, uh, would like to give opportunity to learn our experiences. And uh, uh, after that, the exploration and drilling will be uh, appro appropriately uh, it will be implemented. So especially for the geothermal power plant, so we have to find the most appropriate site to be drilled. So we have to, we don't want to be failure. So we would like to be a successor. Uh, I signed an agreement, uh, particularly uh, uh, for Vision 2030, and all uh, the projects that we were signing for spans in infrastructure, particularly power generation, um, uh, loads, railways, and more importantly, uh, the Lamu port. So we are seeing Kenya with significant benefit because we had delayed a project that people could commit uh, for. Also, uh, I'm confident that maybe Kenya will be the biggest uh, beneficiary. And of course, uh, if the figure that we uh, have been put on the table that uh, 12 billion shillings is being spent for this conference is being spent in Kenya. So essentially we can see the trickle-down effect uh, have started particularly with our hospitality industries. The restaurants uh, are full, uh, the hotels are full. So we would say Kenya has started benefiting. And also hosting uh, 34 presidents uh, in a span uh, uh, of uh, four days, again, is very, very significant. The one thing that really stands out about this conference is the investors' interaction with the Kenyan culture. Being the first time the event is happening in Africa, Kenya is keen to promote herself as the land of unlimited opportunities.